Well, I guess it's time. So last week, well, that video didn't really end up where I wanted or how I wanted, but we came to the conclusion that weight wise, I think it's time to remove these SSD wheels off of my no prep car. Simply just because of weight. Like I mentioned in that video, these things aren't extremely heavy, but when talking about weight balance, trying to get more closer to 50-50 front and rear, just the rear wheels alone are a good 140 grams heavier than my old setup. If you've been following the channel for a while though, you know that I don't like to just make a change. I kind of like to test it and see why something works or how something works. So I'm not just going ahead and taking these wheels off today and swapping them straight out. No, I actually have my old split six bead locks with my bead lock rings. And I picked up another set of the Drag Race Concepts Axis rear tire. These are the Axis 30 compounds, the same that I have on the car right now. I want to try to get to as close to the same thing as possible. That way the only change is going to be the wheels. That way we can really see what swapping from this aluminum wheel to these plastic wheels is going to do for us. Speed wise, ET wise, how the car is going to perform with the SSD wheels and then with these. So I have to go through and get these mounted and prepped. I have to go ahead and condition these, sand them down, clean them up. My old tires obviously have more runs on them, but I'm gonna get these sanded down and prepped as close to these as possible. So the tires shouldn't cause any differences in my test today. It should mainly just be the wheels. And what we'll do is we'll make a pass with the SSD wheels, collect the data, save that to the side, swap out the wheels in between passes, make a pass with the split six speed locks and come back and see how that data compares. You can also see over here, I have another Drag Race Concepts package. I picked up a set of their front tires as well because I'm gonna be removing these SSD wheels from this car. I'm gonna be using these SSD wheels on another project pretty soon. I took the tires off of my original set of Proline wheels those tires were bald. It was time for some new ones. So we're going to install those on, put on these axis tires, and then hopefully looking at the forecast tomorrow morning should be okay weather wise. So I'm going to try to make a couple passes before those rain clouds storm in. You saw I started off with two quick passes with the SSD bead lock still on the car. I wanted to get a control basically. Make sure the car was going straight, make sure it was going down the track and get back to where I was last time out before I made the switch. The first pass was the 230 at 67. The second pass was the 225 at 66 miles an hour. So I was right back where I originally was last time out. Now it's time to swap out those wheels. Took all the SSD aluminum wheels off and swapped over to those Proline split six bead locks. I didn't change anything in the ESC. So I went from a 225 at 66 miles an hour, did my normal procedure, went out, made a pass, and immediately picked up to running a 221 at 66 miles an hour. So just that there answered my question, that little bit of rotating mass on the back of there, that extra 140 grams on the back of the car made a difference. That's four hundredths, which isn't a whole lot, but when we're talking drag racing in these kind of numbers, that's a big difference. From there, I left the Proline split six bead locks on and continued running with those for the rest of the day. I started playing around with some stuff in tuning wise. That next pass, the only thing I touched was putting a little bit more turbo in at the end of the pass. And I bumped up my initial stage to 50%. That got us to a 225 at 68 miles an hour. So I slowed down a little bit ET wise, but I gained a couple of mile an hour. 
and I saw my G-forces kind of jump up a little bit. I saw more consistent power throughout the run. After that, I decided I wanted to try something. I've been kind of looking at this feature in the Macklin ESC, and I've gotten conflicting answers about it. Some people say throttle punch needs to be low so that you have a very smooth transfer of power. Other people say, to bump that throttle punch as high as you can, that way it hits harder. So just out of curiosity, I went from 10% all the way to 40%. I decided to go extreme and that way I could really see the difference. And what a difference it made. My fastest pass ever at 219 at 65 miles an hour. I really don't even think the car had enough time to top out mile an hour wise because I got to 132 feet so quickly. 219 for all of us who know about the performance analyzer we know those are two tenths slow so that should technically put me at about a 199 i finally broke past two seconds after that naturally seeing that time got me a little greedy and i got excited about putting more power to it so i bumped that throttle punch up even more bumped it up to 50 percent and the next two passes you're gonna see were nice passes the car went down they were relatively straight and smooth but and i'm thinking we're gonna see that because i believe i did one of them in slow motion with the gopro i'm believing the car kind of spun a good little bit which is why those next two passes i ran a 225 and then a 230 didn't repeat that 219. like i said i'm thinking the car spun i just got a little too greedy with it once the car starts spinning, we're losing ET right then and there, but I'm on a really good track now. So easy enough to see, we're gonna stick with these split six bead locks. The SSD bead locks are gonna go unfortunately, but like I mentioned before, we're gonna use those in another project. So make sure that you subscribe to see what those are going towards. I have a couple more upgrades coming for the DR10M, a couple more changes coming that should Help us a little bit with weight like we talked about in the last video. So make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about my progress with the car, what you wanna see next with the car, what kind of times and mile an hour you think I should be getting with this car. Thank you all for all of the support, all of the tips you've given me throughout my journey with this. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be just as excited as me to see these times popping up with this car now. As always, thanks again for watching, peace.